Good evening, everyone. Uh, had a lot of good feedback on my Strap Code Super uh, Jubilee review. I almost said Super Oyster. Super Jubilee review that I did a little while ago. Uh, and I did realize that when I originally got my first Strap Code strap, I wasn't really aware of everything that went into it. And, and so I figured I'd do a review of my Strap Code Super Oyster, which I've had this one and worn it on this. SKX for uh, almost a couple of years now. It's been almost I, I I either wear the stock Jubilee or I wear this one pretty much exclusively for straps on this watch. And you can see it's taking quite a hefty beating. Uh, I wore this watch with this bracelet for about six months continuously in heavy construction. Uh, so it's I've jackhammered with this watch with this bracelet. I've Operated heavy equipment, uh, dug, uh, worked in hazardous chemical environments, the whole thing. So I was in hazardous hazardous uh, materials, hazmat response. So uh, let's get some dimensions on the strap. Uh, I believe these straps go for about around, I mean, I, I think I paid 60 for it at the time, but uh, 60 or 70, but I think they're going for around 100 now. So, like you might expect, this is a 22. Uh, millimeter strap and it tapers to 18 so it's got a really good taper uh, I think I prefer a little bit more of a taper just because it's such a big lug width so 4 millimeter taper is great on 20 millimeter, 20 millimeter but I think it's a little bit too too little on a, a 22 millimeter um, it's got screwed links See if I can get them to show. There we go, including the top link. Um, they're perfectly nice to use. They're the right size that you can use them with pretty much any generic eyeglass screwdriver. But one issue that I had uh, that I noticed right away is that under vibration from the factory, the screws tend to loosen and work their way out because they're not Loctited from the factory. If they are Loctited, they're not Loctited very well. So. Um, I had to lock tight them. I was I actually happened to be on an away uh, an away job for a week, so I had to run down to like a hardware store and get some lock tight and lock tight them. So the I have the standard clasp on this one, the standard strap code clasp. Um, as you can see, a lot of their strap code ones have a miltat stamped, M I L T A T stamped into the into the uh, one end of the bracelet. Uh, it's solid end length, solid everything. Uh, the standard clasp has three micro adjusts. It's got the flip with two deployment pushers, and it's made of milled steel. Makes everybody really happy and warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, it's got the Rolex style H link before the bracelet, or before the clasp, sorry. Uh, it says stainless steel stamped into here. I'm sure it's made in China. Nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly sol solid. It's got a decent amount of flex to it, which means it's pretty comfortable. Doesn't really make a lot of noise. Mine's thoroughly dirty from being worn for so long. I should have it ultrasonically cleaned, but I haven't yet. So, um, see how much it weighs by itself. And then we will throw it on the, uh, on the SKX and see how it looks. Let's switch to grams so everyone knows what I'm talking about here. There we go. I was cooking with this earlier. So 73 grams, 74, 73, uh, which is almost as much as the SKX head by itself. So doubles the weight of the watch, which means it's very balanced once on the wrist, but you do definitely feel this watch once on this bracelet on your wrist. Comes with these really nice hefty spring bars, kind of like the Seiko spring bars, and they fit. Uh, very well in their channels, so there's a minimum of wiggle when this is on. So let's go ahead and and uh, throw it on. Let's see. I'll try and do it on camera. We'll see how absolutely embarrassing this is. Um, since these are very tight, I just want you to see this because they're they're incredibly tight because they're machined solid end links. So uh, when you try and put machined solid end links on. Um, 
if it, since they're so tight, it can be really finicky. So we will see how this goes. If it if it goes poorly, and you guys have seen enough of my frustration, I'll cut out and come back. But oh, and we've already had our first little bit of fun. One of the spring bars has popped out. I'll have to reach down for it in a second. I will say that people really love solid end links, and I, I don't dislike them, but one of the things that can really be said for hollow end links is they're a lot easier to put in the watch. Oh, I think this one might go. There we go, that's one in. And I keep in mind I've done this probably at least three dozen times in the last two years. And it's still still takes me this long. Now, of course, if they had drilled lugs on this watch, hint, hint, not that they are probably going to be making any updates to this watch, uh, that would have made this a lot easier. There we go. So, it's not as bad as it used to be, probably just due to m me getting better at it and uh, the watch getting worn a little bit. But let's go ahead and throw it on. I've currently got my Hamilton khaki on. And see how it looks. So, there we go. This, uh, it's a nice look. It has a nice taper to it. I think this is probably one of my, oh, this one's not even all the way in. Hang on a second. Probably one of my favorite uh, looks for this watch besides the stock. I really do love the stock. There we go. Stock, stock look for this watch with the Jubilee, the, the Jubilee everyone hates. Uh, I really like it though. But I think this gives it a nice kind of dignified look. It's very comfortable. Like I said, it's quite heavy. You definitely feel it on the wrist. But I have beat the crap out of this, this bracelet. You can see all the scuff marks and stuff on it. And I can pretty much guarantee you that this bracelet will put up with anything you throw at it. And uh, if I have to do any job that's that I'm terrified to wear a watch with, then I throw this watch and this bracelet on and it, it comes out fine. So, I guess you could say this is the ultimate beater combination in my opinion. Nice, reliable 7S26 movement uh, with this um, strap code Super Oyster. I like the standard buckle clasp combination just because it's small, it's relatively thin, uh, the top of it's probably stamped, but the inside's forged, and I don't really care about that anyway. So, um, I think the ratcheting one is way too big. And, uh, yeah. So, hope you've enjoyed this quick little review, long-term review of a uh, strap code Super Oyster after a couple of years on the wrist. Thanks, have a great night.